Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. And I know it's been a while, um, there's just uh, not really been going that much going on. And uh, uh, my original plan for the summer uh, you know, off season was to kind of review stuff on Netflix, but uh, I just haven't really been watching that much stuff on Netflix. Uh, I haven't even finished Luke Cage. I just started watching Iron Fist. Uh, I haven't watched a single episode of Jessica Jones. Um, or very much else on Netflix, to be perfectly honest. Um, but the new TV season is kicking off uh, pretty soon, about a month, give or take. So uh, we're going to be back uh, at full strength then. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, that said, let's kind of get right into it. So uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, I know I am really behind the times here. This did not come out here in Japan until the end of August. And... Um, I just, uh, just just didn't really get around to doing a review of this movie uh, until today. And the main reason for that was, well, part of it was just laziness, but is that I didn't really have a, a very much in the way of strong feelings about this movie. It's not a bad movie. It's an enjoyable movie. I had a good time while I was watching it, but it doesn't really stand out. I suppose some of it might be that with the original Ant-Man movie, Okay, you know, the, what they were trying to do, the, the vibe, the characters, the whole feeling of uh, you know, this type of movie, it felt a little fresh. But when I kind of came here into the sequel, I kind of had a feeling of what to expect from this type of movie and from these characters. I think that's probably one of the reasons I didn't enjoy Deadpool 2 as much as I enjoyed Deadpool, the original Deadpool movie. With the original Deadpool movie, you know, seeing the, everything depicted the way it was, the swearing, the jokes, the violence, you know, that was just, I, that was new. Coming into the second movie, well, I already knew to some degree what to expect. And, <clears throat> like I said, that is that is kind of what the main thing here is, that it's just, you know, another fun little adventure for Ant-Man. Uh, you know, I'm familiar with the type of comedy. I'm familiar with his uh, supporting characters, the ex-cons guys, who honestly, I mean, I know they're meant to be comic relief and all of that, but a little bit of those guys goes a long way, especially Luis. In the original movie, where they actually had more significance to the story, I think they worked better as characters. Uh, the, the, except for Luis, the other guys in the, in the cons are really, really minor characters. They only really get to do one th thing of significance. Uh, Luis is a character who they try to kind of give him some emotional stuff to go on, but it doesn't really work. And like I said, he's one of those type of characters that a little bit of him goes a long way. And I'm just, towards the end of the movie, I'm like, oh man, more stuff with, with Luis. Uh... Yeah. Um, I mean, Paul Rudd continues to be really, really good as uh, as Scott Lang. You know, no complaints whatsoever about Angeline Lilly uh, or Michael Douglas. And I mean, come on, th th we got Michelle Pfeiffer in a Marvel movie as the original, as Janet Van Dyne. I mean, how, how, how cool is that? The original Wasp. And, you know, I was really, towards the end of that movie, uh, worried that um, they were going to, like, killer at the last minute and just sort of but thankfully they didn't do that that would have been incredibly cheap but yeah um i also liked that uh oh yeah we can't forget that we've got uh lawrence fishburne now as bill foster and they kind of did a nice little nod to the character of the comics being goliath um man lawrence lawrence fishburne has uh that guy's put on some weight like seriously i mean uh you know, he's not as young as he was back when he did The Matrix. That was like 20 years ago, but still, dude, um, man. Uh, um, although, in, in all fairness, Michelle Pfeiffer has aged wonderfully. Um, but yeah, it, it, like I said, there's a lot going on in this movie, and it's a fun movie, and it's an entertaining movie, but there's not a lot that really sticks with me. I mean... Ghost was a potentially interesting... Well, I mean, Ghost, I think, was probably one of the stronger elements of the movie. You know, she's not really an evil person. She's just somebody who's incredibly desperate. And the only person that she... Well, 
Okay, she did work as a shield assassin, but you know, shield are technically just sort of black ops good guys, so really nothing worse than what a, a you know a typical black ops group might do. She maybe killed a crooked fed, but that's about it. I mean, they only said man down, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's dead. And even he is, he was a crooked fed. And, um, so I don't really think anybody's going to be crying too many tears over that guy. So, Ghost Desperation, I really wish they'd played that up a little bit more and sort of gone a little bit more and like, hey, look, let's let's work together, let's help you, let us help you. And, I, I mean, this is kind of one of those situations where the villain doesn't need to be the villain. You know, a, reason, a, con a reasonable conversation could solve the problem, but of course, you know, it's much less interesting if they do that. Well, I don't know if I would say it's much less interesting, but, you know, if you sort of diffuse the main villain of the movie with a conversation the first time you kind of, like, in the middle of the movie, it doesn't quite work in terms of storytelling. But they do leave the door open for her to come back in the future, and in some, the way things play out, there might be the potential for kind of a redemption arc for her. Um, the idea of Ghost as a, you know, some kind of potential future character uh, on a, in a heroic terms, that's actually quite intriguing. And um, is kind of worth noting that they decided to um, play her as sort of a, a woman of mixed race when in the comics she's a, a white guy. I mean, I don't really... I can only ever really remember reading one story with Ghost in it, uh, so I don't really have any great attachment to the character. I'm totally fine with uh, that change. Um, oh yeah, my other major uh, criticism of this movie is Agent Wu. And uh, it wasn't until I was reading some stuff after the um, I'd seen the movie, and I was reading some stuff about it, that I re it really clicked for me that this was meant to be Jimmy Wu. Uh, now, Jimmy Wu is a character that's actually kind of intriguing. He was created back in, like, the 50s or 60s as this sort of detective character. Uh, you know, kind of an espionage-ish detective sort of guy. Which, again, this is, like, the 50s and 60s. And having an Asian guy as your lead character, that was, that was a pretty big deal. And, you know, he was portrayed as somebody who was very intelligent and very capable. So... You know, you have to give give Marvel some credit for that one. Um, I'm sure that if you were to go back and look at those, some of those stories with our more modern lens, there would be elements of it that probably wouldn't sit too well for us. But again, you know, I mean, this is uh, this is the day and age when you know having uh, Asian people as lead characters is still an enormous struggle uh, in uh, American entertainment. So. But my main problem was that is that Wu was once again he was just a comic relief character, and a little bit of him went a long way. In the comics, when they kind of brought Jimmy Wu back some years back as a more modern character, uh, and as a well, first he was a, I remember seeing him as a member of the Agents of Atlas. That's where I remember really being introduced to the character in that miniseries, which was really really good. And uh, yeah, Jimmy Woo was portrayed as a really cool character, very smart, very funny, very competent guy. And he was surrounded by these very quirky, very interesting characters. And then, so at the time, Agents of Atlas did make kind of a splash, but it's one of those things that just sort of eventually sort of fell to the side. And then he turned up again just as a regular S.H.I.E.L.D. agent in uh, I think it was some Wolverine story I can't quite remember he was working with Jasper Sitwell who uh, of course in the cinematic universe is dead if I remember correctly but uh, nonetheless uh, in the comics Jimmy Woo is a much more competent and uh, while he's not without humor he, he's a much more serious and more basically much more badass character here he's an annoyance at best I mean he's just kind of like a minor antagonist to Scott. Not a bad person, someone who's really just doing his job and has the distinction of being kind of a doofus. And that really bugged me. Because I remember like, like the whole controversy uh, that's been circling around in recent years about how like 
you know, hey, there's basically almost nothing with Asian people as lead characters. And I, I heard that, and it's a perfectly valid criticism of modern Hollywood. And I always kept thinking, like, man, I really hope they can, you know, bring Jimmy Woo into the Marvel Cinematic Universe and have him be a major character, somebody who can really function as a protagonist. You know, like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. might have been a much better place to do that, but present him as someone who's this very capable and very talented S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. And, you know, someone you could kind of, you know, have uh, maybe have him be the new Coulson of the Marvel movies, since, uh, you know, they're doing other stuff with the original character. And, again, this sort of comic relief is what I get. Well, needless to say, I am extraordinarily disappointed on that front. You know, maybe I'm taking it a little harder than I should, but uh, anyway. Uh, as I said, uh, the movie, I live here in Japan, and uh, one of the nice things about living in Japan is that when you go to the movies, sometimes uh, just for free, they will give you little goodies. And one thing I did get was this. It's actually just a uh, little ad for the Avengers uh, Infinity War uh, DVD. But the real prize that they gave me was this baby. And it even comes in this little carrying bag. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's like free poster. Um, so I'll just read this. It says, it, they use, it says for Iron Man, uh, more than a suit. Thor is more than a god. Black Widow is more than a secret. Hulk is more than a temper. Cap, uh, Captain America is more than a shield. Doctor Strange is more than a doctor. Uh... Falcon is more than a wingman. Spider-Man is more than a kid. Ant-Man is more than a thief. Uh, Black Panther is more than a king. And Star-Lord is more than a legendary outlaw. And in each of these instances, the A is actually the Avengers logo A. And, uh, man, really hard to believe it's been 10 years of uh, all of these Marvel movies, but... Uh, Time does fly, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, so yeah, I'm totally going to be hanging that up here in my apartment. Um, anyway, guys, all in all, Ant-Man and the Wasp is is a good movie. And I definitely did like the uh, little Infinity War nod at the end of the movie. I thought that was very nicely done. But it's it's definitely not a standout in the Marvel movies. It's perfectly serviceable. It's an enjoyable way to spend some time, but definitely, definitely, definitely not as good as some of the other Marvel movies. Not as bad as some of the other Marvel movies either. Uh, I'm still going to put Thor The Dark World as the worst Marvel movie, uh, but nonetheless, it it just doesn't really stand out for me. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to call it here. So, uh, as always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi and also join me on Tumblr at Jedi Reviewer. Until next time, take care and have a good one.